Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat podcast. Today is the daily stand up for um, March 16th. Buckle up and get ready for some serious fun. Uh, what is next for oil? Analyst weigh in on, in after Iran's uh, attack. I got some more things for that. Israeli war cabinet vows response to Iran as oil prices do cool down. Is this temporary? Well, we're going to have a little discussion about it. Let's switch uh, corners here to a little bit of EV. BP cuts uh, as super major scales back EV charging unit. Uh, the, you, anyway, I uh, didn't even realize they had that unit. Tesla lays off more than 10% of the staff globally as sales fall. People are just not really uh, fired up about buying their EVs right now. Power grids are facing more demand than ever. Policy needs to catch up. Thought this was a pretty cool um, uh, story from Todd uh, Schnitzler from the CEO of Electric Power Supply Association. Then the last one is a little bit more of a, a thought process type a geopolitical story from the Turkish parliament to consider bill on of sale of LNG as part of a gas hub creation. Got a map and there's some things in this little nugget here that are not in the story. So hang on, let's get busy. What's next for oil analyst weigh in on after, uh, after the attack. I'm going to go through about four or five different really key analysts and their uh, prediction what is possible. $100 is possible from Citigroup, quote unquote, what is not priced into the current market, in our view, is potential continuation of a direct conflict between Iran and Israel, which we estimate could see prices trade up well above 100 uh, barrels per day, depending on the nature of the events. Um, And so let's go to Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs risk premium. Uh, They, this is a quote unquote, we estimate that the price Oil prices already reflect a five to ten dollar barrel risk premium from downside risk to supply. Before the weekend attacks, uh, Goldman Sachs said analysts, including Dan uh, Struvian, uh, said to note potential Israeli response to uh, Iran's attack is highly uncertain and will likely determine the extent of the threat to the oil supply. So you can see how this is kind of formulating in lots of great stuff right here. Watch for possible response from ICG. They're saying that Iran has been signaling that this was it. The next story that I'm about to talk about kind of says, oh, it's not. So um, and then we can guide uh, another group. ING group says it's already priced in. Uh, RBC says to the shadows in response, uh, this is a quote in such a scenario, we think the risk to oil is not insignificant given the Iranian seizure of the vessel in the Strait of Hormuz. Um, but it's predicted that the missile and drone attacks, uh, could, if Israel stands down or carries out a demineous response, it seems that Iran might very well take the opportunity to return this war to the shadows. Uh, That means uh, attacking through uh, foreign uh, countries or third parties. Here's where uh, in Miss Producer, if you could bring this up forward, uh, the graphic, this is a graphic uh, showing uh, it's the energy information administration inter international energy statistics and the world's biggest oil producers in 2023. Take a look at this. United States is 12.9%. Then you have um, Canada at 4.6, Russia at 10.1, Saudi Arabia at 9.7. Now, here's part of the reason the Saudis at 9.7 
they could blow this number out of the water for the U.S., but they are holding back because of their leadership in OPEC, and they don't really need to. Iraq, critical point, 4.3 million barrels per day. That's a lot. And if you take 4.3 million barrels a day off the market, if Israel responds, and as Lindsey Graham has said, he wants to do, if there was a way to hit the Iranian oil fields, and you take a significant portion of that, I think it's going to be all bets on uh, off on oil because it could take quite a uh, quite a ways to build that up. China is four point two, but they're importing a ton. Brazil is three point four, and they're not ready to uh, expand back out. So uh, the other is other countries, and don't know that they have the capacities to bring that forward. So um, you take into consideration the war on oil from the Biden administration is another piece of this uh, puzzle. This article is actually pretty interesting. It says Israeli war cabinet vows response to Iran as oil prices cool down. Uh, I found this pretty uh, interesting. Uh, there was... Uh, they shot up early Monday morning, uh, but before pairing gains, the markets considered easing of tensions and possible avoidance of war. Um, but I ran, uh, they did say they are going to respond. So um, the war cabinet uh, on Monday morning vowing a response to what is being described as a direct attack on Israel even though um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, I don't know if this is verified or not, but de she did say that the Biden administration, uh, admit, uh, that it is uh, being published in several different areas that Joe Biden gave the Iranians permission. Don't know. Sure is weird that it's coming up on a lot of different places. So if you have uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, which she could either be right or wrong. Then you have all the other sources, right or wrong. If Joe Biden did give permission to Iran and then uh, he is telling um, um, uh, Israel to stand down, this is really some big news. And so the key is, is Israel going to go ahead with this? Um, I don't know, but everybody's thinking about it. Let's go ahead and go to BP cuts jobs as super major scales back EV charging unit. You know, uh, Michael and I have really talked about BP a, a lot, uh, especially with getting a new, uh, CEO and, uh, BP has cut over a 10th of its workforce in EV charging business. BP pulse is the super major downsizing the division and retreating from several countries to focus on four key markets, just four key markets. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. I was really not paying attention to the BP EV, uh, charging business, um, so it suffered early this decade when the company announced its net zero strategy. And it says uh, BP said in February it would be producing more oil and gas for longer and in increase investment into oil and gas projects at an average of up to one billion a year increase uh, until 2030. Um it and and again, this falls right into the consumer market is pushing back on the EVs. Um, quote unquote, uh, auction class uh, says we thought we'd be doing fleets as we started this, it actually drifted more towards individual as opposed to fleets. Big difference in uh, setting up chargers for a fleet as opposed to individuals. 
Following along this EV trouble, Tesla lays off more than 10% of their global staff. Uh, this is pretty amazing when you take a look at uh, Tesla senior manager Drew uh, Bal uh, Balgeno. I hope I didn't butcher his name too bad, in charge of battery development, and uh, Rohan Patel, vice president of public policy, were both announced their exits from X. So, this is not just an, a lightweight uh, cutting out, they're also taking part of the managers out. Here's a quote. Musk said, as we prepare the company for our next phase of growth, it's extremely important to look at every aspect of the company for cost reductions and increasing productivity. Um, as part of the effort, we have done a thorough review of the organization and made the difficult decision to reduce our headcount. I applaud. I want this going on record. I applaud uh, Elon Musk, for, uh, especially for everything that he's doing with uh, SpaceX X. Uh, I just really think that uh, te uh, Tesla is going to survive very nicely with good management, as Michael and I have always said, good management, good numbers. And he's going to be around. People will be buying uh, Teslas. The other side of this coin is also Tesla is creating a very large plant in India, and I applaud that because there will be a uh, market in uh, India for those that can afford it. Why not get the best of the best of the breeds breeds? So let's go over here to the power grids. Power grids are facing more demand than ever. Policy needs to catch up. This one was pretty wild from Todd Snitchler, uh, president CEO of the Electrical Power Supply Association, which represents the U.S. competitive power suppliers. This is just crazy. He says in the article, power demand is growing rapidly across every part of the country due to a host of factors. Number one, data center. Number two, reshoring of manufacturing. Number three, growing electrification and the rapidly growing power demands of artificial intelligence are all contributors. I'll tell you what, this is amazing of what the power demand is going to be. The balancing authorities that we have on the grid are working overtime and adding power right now is uh, unbelievable and in, in, in trying to add uh, renewable energy, which is quote unquote renewable. It's actually just an additional solar and wind without it. And here is a quote in the article. It's time for a reality check. The energy transition is a misnomer. The U.S. requires an energy expansion that incorporates every tool we have at our disposal to deliver more power at lower emissions, both reliable and cost effectively. I, I agree with his statement. Let's use all forms of energy, but if you cannot meet market prices and you, you have to have a dead on apples to apples, oranges to oranges uh, comparison of pricing, nobody is pricing in land reclamation or uh, taking down the wind farms at the end of their life cycles and then they're abandoned. The landowners are now responsible for the reclamation and turning this back to pristine um, environments. And the oil and gas industry is responsible for putting up bonds for doing that. Have they always done a great job? No, but there is a decent uh, amount of regulatory issues and liabilities that are there so that you can go ahead and enforce the uh, orphan well sy system still has a long way to go but i'll tell you um he also brings up a great point we need to uh we need policies that encourage more of everything uh, including natural gas. We need stronger market signals that prioritize uh, reliability and ensure the investments that provide are 
profitable. Finally, we need policies that acknowledge the necessity of resilient energy infrastructure and the enormous cost that will have uh, that inaction will have for the American consumers. And then he brings up in here regulatory problems. We're spending years and countless amount of additional money on the regulatory process for wind, solar, nuclear, and all of it. We've got to save money on the regulatory process, even if uh, renewables, as I say, wind, solar. Let's go to the next article. This article is really one to watch for. This article does not go into some of the hidden geopolitical things that are about LNG. In a, uh, I'm going to start with the first paragraph here. Deputies of the Tur uh, Turkish parliament, after a month and a half a break caused by local elections, will resume their legislative activity on April 16th. One of the most important documents they will consider is a bill allowing the sale of natural gas imported by the Republic in liquefied form LNG in a source in a parliamentary uh, circles told TASS. Quote, the approval of the bill will be one of the most important steps to create a legislative flame, uh, framework to transform Turkey into an international gas trading center. Holy smokes. This is going to have about three or four orders of magnitude of impact. While it may slide by a lot of the mainstream media, it may slide by a lot. I guarantee you, we're going to be looking at energynewsbeat.co at this. Uh, Miss Producer, if you could bring up the map. Uh, this is a map of uh, the pretty much the Middle East, Mediterranean, and uh, other areas. You can see Turkey dead center in the, in the center. And there are pipelines rolling through, uh, just regular uh, gas pipelines and oil pipelines. And then if you look at the center on uh, the one side of it, uh, on the left-hand side of Turkey, there's a numeral number two. That is an LNG import facility. What that means is you see the, the gas can go flow up to Bulgaria. It can flow all the way down into Syria. It can flow all the way over and, and then it can actually hit in the southern part and roll over to Greece. Greece will have another connecting point and be able to come in from the Cyprus, which is number 10, which is an import facility as well. And if you import from it, you can export from it. And as you come into Israel and Egypt, Egypt is now a mix between importing and exporting, depending on the amount of natural gas coming from the Leviathan field in the Mediterranean. This is a very complicated issue, and a second order of magnitude is sanctions being placed on any kind of, uh, let's say, cutter. Let's say we play uh, the government, not we, but the government, the U.S. government puts sanctions on Russia's LNG. Here's a loophole. Because they could drop off LNG at Turkey and it would go into gas pipelines in there. So there are many ways that sanctions can be bypassed once LNG is now offloaded. LNG does not have the dark fleet such as or the gray fleet, however you want to uh, pronounce it. But Russia has increased their energy exports through LNG and through uh, oil using the dark fleet, avoiding sanctions. This one may be a very large sanction uh, avoidance scheme, uh, if you would. 
So uh, buckle up and uh, as always, like, subscribe, share. Uh, we've got some wonderful things coming around the corner. Just released Irina Slav and uh, also have some other great podcasts coming up every monday morning please join me with david blackman irena slav and tammy nemeth on the energy realities live on our youtube live on i believe tammy's uh x uh david blackman's x and david blackman's um um linkedin so also subscribe at the energy newsbeat uh, dot substack dot com. Reach out, and if you are a energy podcast, or excuse me, if you're an energy expert in anything from geopolitical renewables, nuclear, uh, wind, solar, uh, storage, uh, I want to talk to you. And remember, this is about eliminating energy poverty. Thank you so much. And I hope you have an absolutely fantastic today and uh, hug somebody, hug your dog, hug, a, hug your neighbor. Hey, have a great one.